Hi, welcome everyone to the Wellbeing Web Series, uh, Recharging Your Resilience. And today we're going to talk about being the resilient caregiver. My name is Terry Weber. I'm a social worker with the University of Kentucky Work Life Elder Care Program. So to give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about today, um, what is resiliency? Uh, the basic facts of caregiving, caregiving stress, how to manage stress, and strengthening your resiliency. Um, being a caregiver for an older loved one is hard work, plain and simple. It's full of conflict, conflicting emotions and it can be a tedious job. Caregiving can be incredibly rewarding, but it can also be incredibly stressful. For some, that translates into exhaustion, depression, and resentment. Caregiving can change who you are. How can you help yourself? Be resilient. So, what is resiliency? Resiliency is the ability to withstand, recover from, and grow in the face of adversity. Resiliency is what gives people the mental strength to cope with stress and hardship. It is that reservoir or pool, so to speak, of strength that people can call on in a time of need to help carry them through. With resiliency, you can bounce back from a crisis and you can bounce forward into a new normal. It can help you cope with change or loss, both which are inevitable parts of life. Everyone experiences varying degrees of setbacks. Resiliency helps you deal with these setbacks. It plays a significant role in not only the outcome of the event, but in how we perceive that event and how that event will affect us. So we have an idea of what resiliency or, or why resiliency is important, but why is resiliency important to caregivers? When we talk about caregiving, Rosalind Carter summed it up best. She said, there are only four kinds of people in the world those that have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need caregiving. So pretty much, she put us all in the same corner. So first, let's start talking about the basic facts of caregiving. First of all, know, oop, there we go. First of all, know that you're not alone. There are 34.2 million Americans that provide unpaid care for an adult over 50 years old, and 16 million of those provide unpaid care for someone with Alzheimer's or other dementia. And half of those caregivers are working outside the home. Know that your work has value. Did you know that the value of service provided by unpaid caregivers in the United States is estimated to be over 470 billion, yes, that's with a B, and the care of value provided to unpaid caregivers to someone with Alzheimer's or other dementia is $232 billion. Yes, your work has value. Third, this is the first cardinal rule of caregiving, care for yourself. Caregiving is stressful work. Taking care of your own physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual needs is imperative when you're caring for someone. The example they always give is, when flying the friendly skies, adjust your oxygen mask first before helping others. The same is true on caregiving. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't have the physical or mental energy to care for anyone else. The fourth, connect with others. Connections are important. Caregiving is its unique journey, but all caregivers share a common experience. Joining a support group, asking a friend a coffee, or going to an online open caregivers forum are ways to share your experience, get insight from others, and feel less isolated in your caregiving role. And last, know your limits and respect your limits. We all have them, and it's important to recognize when you have reached your end. Because once you've gone beyond that point, you are no good to anyone. So stop, step back, and take a break. It's vital not only to your well-being, but to the well-being of the person you're caring for. So these are the basic facts of caregiving. If you accept them and you can work with them, you can help make yourself stronger. So here's a riddle. What takes away strength and resiliency? The answer? Stress. Stress is that feeling of being under abnormal pressure. It's that pressure of providing care and support for an older loved one can easily create stress. 
It's important to be able to recognize the signs of stress so you can start to manage it sooner rather than later. Because ignoring your symptoms of stress can only lead to problems down the road. Feelings of constant worry and anxiety. It's that low level buzz of unsettledness that you feel. The feelings of being overwhelmed, difficulty concentrating, mood swings, irritability, depression, eating more or less than usual, changes in sleeping habits, using alcohol, tobacco, and illegal drugs to relax, and the loss of sex drive. Do you recognize any of these signs? So now that we've talked about what is caregiver stress, how are some of the things that we can manage? The first one, eat healthy. As Michael Pollan, author of such books as In Defense of Food and Food Rules, advises, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. If you have questions about how to incorporate healthy eating into your lifestyle, contact UK's Health and Wellness and speak to one of their registered dietitians, Karen or Vanessa. Journaling, this is my personal favorite. Journaling is a quick, inexpensive, and effective way to reduce stress, deflect anger, and develop clarity. The only equipment needed is a pen and paper. It involves keeping a diary and writing in detail your thoughts and feelings on what's going on. And this is something personal. You don't have to share it with anyone. So you don't need to worry about penmanship or grammar or what words you choose. You don't have to journal every day in order to see the benefits. A few times a week works well, or even journaling on an as-needed basis can help reduce stress. By getting the negative thoughts out of your head and down on paper frees up your mind to think more clearly and rationally about your situation. And exercise. Integrating physical activity into your daily life can be an effective way in relieving stress. Going out for a 10-minute walk can calm your mind and relax your body. Walking is free, it's low impact, it doesn't require any special equipment, and it can be done almost anywhere, anytime. It's a good habit to get into. Regular exercise of any kind, walking or biking or swimming, lowers your blood pressure, boosts your mood, helps you think more clearly, and gives you a better night's sleep. So, if you have any questions about how to incorporate more physical activity into your lifestyle, contact UK's Health and Wellness and speak to one of their exercise specialists, Carrie or Ryan. Take time out. I know this is a lot easier said than done, but take time to listen to music or play with your pets or garden or work on a hobby or sit in a coffee shop or do whatever you like. But spending time with yourself away from your caregiving responsibilities and doing something you enjoy is time well spent. It makes you a happier, healthier person and it benefits not only you, but everyone around you. Be mindful. Now that's a word that we hear a lot lately, but what is that? So mindfulness is that moment by moment, minute by minute awareness of what's going on in your thoughts, your feelings, your surroundings. It involves paying attention to what's happening now. And this changes our ability to manage non-productive thoughts into more productive, positive thoughts. There's a lot of research on it, and the research shows that practicing mindfulness on a daily basis can help reduce stress, help reduce anxiety, and improve your overall physical and mental well-being. So, if you have any questions on how to start practicing a mindfulness, contact UK's Health and Wellness and speak to one of their life coaches, Jackie or Amy, and get some restful sleep. I know this is really hard for those of you who are caregivers living with your care person. Sometimes they get up in the middle of the night and wander, and it's difficult. But sleep plays an important role in your overall physical and mental health. Continual sleep deficiency can increase the risk of heart disease, blood pressure, weight gain, stroke, and diabetes. So here are just a few ideas of how to get a good night's sleep. Try to go to bed and get up at the same time each day, even on the weekends. Spend time each day outdoors in the sunlight. Sunlight will give your body the vitamin D it needs and it can help regulate your body's um, circadian rhythm. The next one, don't consume caffeine late at night. 
Um, take short naps, but keep, or yeah, take short naps, um, 10 to 20 minutes. Avoid alcohol before bed. Optimize your bedroom environment. So, you know, turn out the lights, the sound, and that includes all the electronics, the iPads, the iPhones, the Kindle devices. And regulate the room temperature to cool. Don't eat late in the evening. Take a relaxing bath or shower before bedtime. And exercise regularly, but not too close to bedtime. And lastly, if you've tried all the above and are still feeling anxious or stressed out in your caregiving role, talk to a professional. The UK Work Life Work Plus Connections Program offers five free counseling sessions with a licensed and certified therapist, either Ann or Rhonda. All UK retirees, employees, 0.5 time equivalent or greater, their spouses and your sponsored dependents are eligible for this service. Use the resources available to you here on campus or in the community. It's hard to be resilient when your energy is being sapped by stress. Managing stress lets you divert some of that energy toward being resilient, and resiliency can be learned and improved upon. It's not something we have to live without. So, we've talked about ways to manage stress. Now let's talk about ways to build your resiliency. Here are a few. Accept your emotions, the good, the bad, and the ugly. These are your feelings and you have a right to own them. Some days are gonna be easier to find the patients needed for caregiving, and other days your patience is gonna be worn paper thin. Accept this. Part of this stress comes from the way you perceive and react to what's going on in your life. Think things through before responding. It's always gonna put you one step ahead. Be realistic, accept your situation. Being a caregiver, you are responsible for the well-being of others. They oftentimes do not recognize, acknowledge, or even care about your contributions and sacrifices, yet you need to continue caring for them. No matter the difficulties or disappointments, you need to keep moving ahead. Frequently, our response to a difficult situation is to just wish it away, but you can't. You need to take action or accept that sometimes things cannot be changed. Some things can only be managed in the best way possible. Those who fully understand and accept their caregiving role are more likely to cope well with the responsibilities and challenges ahead. The key is to be resilient. The third way to build resiliency, assemble a team. A team of family and friends and professionals who can support you in your caregiving role. This team can help relieve some of the day-to-day -day pressures of caregiving. Accepting help and support strengthens your resiliency. It's not a sign of weakness. Find the person, the group, or the resource that can best help. Surround yourself with those who you trust and respect and with who you can share your needs, frustrations, and sadness with. This will help you keep feel connected. And just to reiterate, take advantages of the resources here on campus. Don't forget the UK Work-Life Elder Care Office. I can help you identify resources and services available in your area and provide guidance and support in those next caregiving steps. Again, the Work-Life Plus Connections Program offers five free counseling sessions. Talk with Anne or Rhonda to see if they can help. The fourth, be open to new discovery. Being aware of how you deal with challenging caregiving situations is a good way to learn something about yourself. Caregivers who understand the frustrations and hardships of caregiving often find that they have a greater sense of strength, increased sense of self-worth, and a greater appreciation for life. Believe in yourself. You're stronger than you think. This I know from personal experience. And again, take care. You need to be at your best when caring for someone else. Pay attention to your own physical and emotional needs. Being able to recognize when you're feeling overwhelmed, exhausted, or resentful is not only important to you, but to the person you're caring for. Caregiving can be rewarding, but it can also be emotionally and physically exhausting with constant demands on your time. Knowing when it is time to take a break is imperative. No matter what, caregiving will change you. You must recognize that and be resilient, or the changes will overwhelm you. We've looked at why caregiving is important 
and why it's difficult. We've looked at ways to lessen stress, and most importantly, we've seen that resiliency is key in helping you grow while being a caregiver. You need to keep your resiliency up. If you have any questions or concerns or just need to talk about your caregiving role, please contact me, Terry Weber, at the information on the screen. Thank you.